Hi. This is Microcorp 2, Korg's sequel to what is allegedly the best-selling synth of all time. It's got a new sound engine, a high-res screen, a totally new interface, but they remained loyal to the form factor and design spirit of the original. In this video, I'll take a look at the differences between the new Microcorg and the original. Before I do a quick disclosure, this is a pre-production prototype I borrowed from Korg and it's running beta firmware, so what you see or hear may be different from the production model. And since things aren't final and I don't even have a manual yet, this video won't be a full review. If you're from the future, look for a link to that in the description. Okay, let's get going. It's tempting to start with the interface and what's going on in the screen. We'll get to that in a bit, but before that, I'll talk about the new brains inside. While the engine has many similarities to the one in the original Microcorg, it's a totally new synth engine. It's got eight voices instead of just four. It's got three oscillators instead of just two and a configurable noise generator instead of a fixed noise generator here, and the oscillators themselves are way more capable. It's got a continuous morphing multi-mode filter, as opposed to one with just fixed modes. The LFOs have a one-shot mode, so they can be used as envelopes, not just as LFOs, and their shape can be smoothed. It's got six mod matrix slots instead of just four, and there are more sources and way more destinations. It's got substantially more effects and more vocal processing options, including a new auto-tune and harmonizer voice effects. It's also got a built-in audio looper, and you can change the default mappings of its knobs on a per-patch basis. This also has trophies for achievements you can unlock, like making a patch bay assignment. Like the original, this synth is bitambral. So for example, I've got a pad running on timbre 2, and I've got this set to its uh, LFO intensity and frequency. And then in parallel, I've got timbre 1 running this arpeggiated pattern. And I've got control over its resonance and filter cutoff using these assignable knobs and the two timbres can run simultaneously. One last note about bitemporality, at least as of the current firmware, it's layers only, no splits. It's fairly light and can be battery powered like the original. It is slightly wider. It still has mini keys, but they're a little bit more spacious, about half an inch or 15 millimeters. And then probably the biggest improvement is the workflow and user interface for editing patches. Synths have a lot of parameters, as you can see on the panel of the original Microcorg. On the original, you had to turn these encoders to find the row of parameters that you want to control. And then say, if I wanted to control, uh, let's say LFO1, I'd need to figure out if I'm on a synth or on a vocoder patch. And then these five knobs would control the five parameters listed here. So for example, this knob would change the LFO shape. This one would turn key sync on or off. And this would change its frequency. I don't know about you, but not how I want to spend my day. And then over here, it's as easy as pressing the button. The parameters are listed here and you edit them with the color coded knobs. You can also edit the parameter you touched last using the increase and decrease knobs. Of course, these animations don't hurt and add a lot to help understanding exactly what's going on. Each of the buttons or modules have a tabs and you can see which one you're on as you tap it repeatedly. And then the center of the screen can be either in a mode where it animates and shows you the different parameters or in oscilloscope mode where you get a live oscilloscope. Previously, if you weren't editing a parameter, just head out to the main screen, you'd control one of five preset parameters. Here, when you exit to the home screen, you can control any parameters in either timbre that you want to assign using the assign tab. These are saved on a per preset basis. So in each preset, you can configure the five knobs to control the most important parameters for that patch. There's no shift button, but if you see these little rectangles and labels in some places, this means that you can long press a button to reach additional 
general settings. So for example, here you're editing individual effects, but if you press the setting button, you're editing settings that apply to them all. Same goes here, you can edit individual effects or a long press here lets you edit additional global parameters for the effects. The on off button kind of acts like a shift button to turn effects on and off or the harmonizer and vocoder. So those are the main things that are new in terms of the interface. Preset selection works pretty much like the old microcorg with banks. You've got four banks to choose from. And let's turn off the scope. You get bigger labels in that case. Then you've got eight categories and then individual presets within the categories. As you make or store presets, you obviously don't have to follow the naming convention here. So if you're worried about committing to any one of these genres or all of them, don't. In terms of build beside the slightly wider keyboard, the mod and pitch bend wheels feel exactly the same to me. There's a mic gain knob now on the panel instead of on the back, which is great. Then in terms of connectivity, there's no MIDI through, just MIDI in and out. You've got the same microphone inputs additional gain control on the old one for the auxiliary input. No such controls here on the new one. Both have quarter inch stereo and headphone outputs. And we now have a USB-C jack on the new microcorg. There was no USB port on the original. You can use this to hook up to your computer and send MIDI back and forth as well as upgrade the firmware. And I don't know yet if it can send audio over USB. Okay, so that's a general overview of what's new. Let's dive in section by section. And I want to repeat the caveat that I mentioned earlier. This is just a prototype unit with beta firmware, so things might change or be added. Anyway, despite that, there are quite a few new things in the oscillator section. Beside that, that instead of two of them, there are three of them. Each of the three oscillators now has all of the waveform options. So these include the basic shapes with wave shaping options. We'll get to Oscmod in a bit. So saw, square, triangle, sine, and then DWGS, which is Korg for single cycle waveform, actually does a bit more. So there's a few usual suspect waveforms. And let's maybe turn on the scope so we can see them. So these are all single cycles. But if we keep going down the list, and some of them have a bit of motion. And then still new in the oscillator section is or are the one shots. So these are, as the name implies, sample one shots, which you can play chromatically. Let's so maybe take off the scopes because you can see their name here. Two effects. So 32 of those. So you can play these chromatically or combine them with other oscillators as transients. There's no word if you can load up your own samples in here and there are no looping samples for sustained instruments. So no PCM style instruments like on the King Korg Neo. Again, at least not as of this firmware. And then one final new thing in the oscillator section is the oscillator mod option. As far as I could reverse engineer this, it accepts an oscillator mod from oscillator three. So let's go into oscillator three and there are a few options here, ring, sync, ring and sync, and VPM, which is like FM synthesis. And the nice thing is you can choose any waveform you want for this. I can, I'll choose a simple one just for starters. And also I've got a simple one for oscillator one. So we've got simple VPM, but I could choose any shape I wanted for more aggressive tones or even one of the DWGS waveforms. And same goes for the modulating oscillator. So we've got sine, but I could choose any one of the DWGS wave shapes for that. So plenty of buzziness to explore here. And then moving on, there's a more flexible noise generator. So for that, I'll go into the mixer, turn down oscillator one and turn up noise level. There's a low pass filter option then a high pass, filter noise, and band pass. 
and even a decimator. As long as we're here, there's also a useful option to disable keyboard tracking for any one of the three oscillators. Move it into fixed mode, in which case it will drone at a fixed frequency that you set over here. Moving on from the oscillators into the filter, the new feature here is that you can morph between the filter types, four pole, two pole, band pass, and two pole and four pole high pass. There's resonance. And drive. I'll explore this more in depth in the full review, just in case they tweak or change anything here. Then briefly, let's talk about the modulation section. Again, I'll cover this in depth in the review. You've got two envelopes, amp and filter envelope, two LFOs with a one-shot mode for the LFOs as well. So you can use these as envelopes. We've got the usual suspect shapes and a delay option. And then the mod matrix not only has six slots instead of just four on the original micro cork, but it also has two sources. So you can easily use one to control the other, say a mod wheel or an envelope to control an LFO mod depth. Moving on, as far as I could see, the arpeggiator is the same more or less. You can long press to latch the arpeggiator as opposed to a somewhat obscure menu item here. And we can ease on down the road and talk about vocal processing. Now, this is also something I wanna save for the main review because I was told things here aren't final, but there's a lot of new stuff. Let's just take a little quick peek. First, you've got three vocal processing options, a vocoder, very similar to the original micro -corg. This works differently than the original micro -corg. In the original, you'd have to choose whether a timbre was a synth or a vocoder, and you'd have different sets of parameters for each, depending on what you chose. Here, the vocoder is an effect that gets applied to the timbre as you design it here. So the vocoder sounds something like this. And there are a bunch of sound design options here. We'll get to that in the main review. And then it's either or, you can't have hard tune or auto tune with the vocoder, but you can add a harmonizer to the hard tune. So let me sing for you. Uh. or harmonize. I can't sing. I'm sure Billie Eilish is worried. I don't think there's any point in going through all these settings until this is final, but there are pretty interesting ones in both. And if you long press this, you can choose the auto tune root and scale from a bunch of scales. So none of this except the basic vocoder exist in the original micro -cork. Let's move on and take a listen to the effects. There are three effects slots and an EQ. This is opposed to two effects slots on the original micro -cork, and it also had an EQ. There's a new reverb slot and more mod and delay effects. Again, we'll wait for the final firmware, but just to give you a taste of these, there are quite a few effect options in the mod slot. And same applies to the delays. So just a quick taste of all these. And then there's a brand new reverb slot. Let's see how long this can go. With, um, Room, spring, rust, pitch shift, and a low res option. Let's head on back to the voice options just to make sure I didn't miss anything important. There's a unison option with configurable detune and spread. And this is just one oscillator. The other oscillators are down currently, so this can get even richer. A nice twist here, if you reduce the number of voices you use for unison, say, to four, then you can play two notes simultaneously, and with two, even four. So I think we covered the important new stuff here. 
Let's talk about the loop recorder. This is something that I rarely find on synths, an actual audio loop recorder. There's no sequencer, by the way, at least not as of the current firmware. This actually records incoming audio. Before you start, you can long press to set a few settings. You can set the uh, number of beats that you want to record. So this is tempo dependent. And yes, I tried to lower the tempo all the way down to 40. It'll then let you only record 96 beats, which is about 40 plus seconds. I didn't do any testing regarding how quality impacts this. Let's wait for the final firmware for that. You can start with a pre-count or not, or trigger the looper with the keyboard. And then there's a metronome. You can set metronome level. And there's a loop indicator here, and we can just record something. Let's hit record and play. There's a pre-count and then it starts recording. And this will also record audio. Hello, hello. So there's only hello. so much of that that I can take. You can clear the loop and start again. The loop records post effects, but it has one live effect. Let's just create a loop. One live effect called stutter. It loops small slices of your loop. And it's not working because record is on. And with a bit of tweaking, it can even sound a bit like a granular effect. So this is the part of the video where I usually talk about pros and cons. Since we're talking about a not final prototype, I'll leave that for the main review, which I'll link to below when ready. But in the meantime, feel free to ask me any questions you like in the comment section below. I'll only have this prototype for a few more days, but worst case, I'll just make a list and respond when the finished synth arrives. Until then, if you want to make sure you're ready to make the most of your synths, please check out my ever-expanding book of electronic music ideas, tips, and tricks, available to the people who support this channel on Patreon. Hit like if this was useful, ring the YouTube bell below if you want to make sure you don't miss the next one. Thanks for watching.